it's likely that your puppy's first car ride home will be the one from the breeder's home to your home. There will be a lot of car rides in your puppy's life, so it is important to make sure that we start off on the right paw and make it a positive experience. Otherwise, your puppy may have a lifetime of anxiety while riding in the car. Before we start, be sure to hit that thumbs up to let me know you're watching. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when next week's video goes live. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Before you leave the breeder's home or even the foster family where your puppy has been staying, you'll want to make sure they have a potty break before they get into the car. Now, if your car ride will be about an hour or less, it's likely you will not need to stop for a potty break along the way. If your car ride will be longer than an hour, it's recommended that you stop every one to two hours to give your puppy a potty break. Remember, your puppy can only hold it about an hour or two for each month of age. Most people pick up their pups at around eight weeks or even just a little bit older. This is the ideal time to bring a new puppy home. Now, when you're stopping, you're going to want to find a place that is not heavily trafficked by other dogs or potentially other wild animals. Since your puppy really isn't fully up to date on vaccinations, this means they aren't covered against any viruses or diseases left behind by other animals. You can always use an alternative uh, potty setup by using the fresh patch I talk about in this video here. I know it's gonna seem a little odd or maybe even a little inconvenient to bring something like this along. However, you wanna keep your puppy as safe as possible, especially if your area has high cases of parvo. Parvo can be deadly to puppies. It is important to keep your puppy on a leash when taking them out of the car for a potty break. More than likely, they will want to stay near you, but you have to remember, you are brand new to them and they just don't know who you are yet. You are just starting to build a relationship with them. So any number of things can actually spook them and send them running off and away from you. Things like loud trucks, horns honking, and cars racing by can all scare a brand new puppy who's never been exposed to these things before. Now, the big question I always get is, how should my puppy travel home? Should I keep them on my lap? Should I put them in the crate? Should I put them in a car seat? We never advise traveling with a puppy on your lap. This would be like bringing a brand new baby home from the hospital in your arms or on your lap. Uh, that's against the law and it's just not safe if somebody slams on their brakes in front of you. We highly recommend your puppy travel home in a crate for several reasons. This is so much safer for your puppy to stay while you're driving. The first experience they have away from their litter should be in a crate, as it's likely that your puppy is going to fall asleep on the car ride home. Typically, a car ride lulls a puppy to sleep just like it does a baby. Keeping your puppy in the crate will be less distracting for you as well. You'll know that they are safe and won't be able to wander around your vehicle. They are less likely to have an accident in your vehicle if they're in the crate, and in the off chance they do have an accident, it won't be all over your seats. That would be a mess to clean up. All right, if you're wondering which size crate would be best, I highly recommend that you take a peek at this video here. We wanna make sure that your puppy is in the right size crate. Now, if the crate is too big, they have too much room to roam around, this is gonna to lead to accidents as well as anxiety for your puppy. We want just enough room for your puppy to be able to stand, turn around, and lay down comfortably. If you were unable to fit a crate in your vehicle, the next best option would be a safety harness that is specifically designed to click into the seatbelt in your car. Be aware that most puppies like to chew on these harnesses at an early age. We often see puppies chewing through the teething stage, which can last up to about six to eight months. I will link a car safety harness in the description below for those of you that can't fit a crate into your vehicle. Now, I'm not a big fan of car seats for dogs for several reasons. The first reason being that they typically don't secure the puppy in very well. These car seats are not rated very well for puppy safety either. If you're driving and your puppy jumps out of the car seat, it's likely that they may get stuck between like the door and the seat. They may hurt their neck or distract you from safely driving. One thing most new puppy owners don't realize is that new puppies get car sick very easily. 
This is because their equilibrium isn't fully developed till they're about a year old. Restricting your puppy's access to roam around the vehicle helps to decrease the chances of them getting sick in the car while you're driving. When your puppy has access to visibly see all the stimuli passing by at a rapid speed outside the vehicle, this can be very overwhelming for your puppy. Oftentimes puppies get overwhelmed and anxious from all those sights and sounds and smells all kind of coming at them at rapid rates. When we keep our puppies in the crate, we do cover the crate to keep it comfy and cozy and to reduce the amount of stimuli your puppy can see. I often get asked if a dog seat hammock could be used instead of any of the other recommendations I've made. I still think these aren't the best option as it still allows your puppy to be walking back and forth uh, on the back seat or in the back of your vehicle. The more they pace back and forth, the more their anxiety is going to build up. The more space they have, the more opportunity for accidents to happen in your back seat. For older, mature dogs, you may find this product to be beneficial to limit the distractions coming from the back seat. I still would be using a safety harness or even a crate if I was using that backseat hammock. When you travel with your puppy, you're going to want to make it as calm and relaxing as possible. This means that you're probably going to have to change the station to something calming and soothing. You're going to find music that's similar to what a spa would play as you're getting a massage. I know this may not be your typical cruising routine, but Car rides for puppies can be a little overwhelming. I also recommend using a product like Adapto. It's a dog appeasing pheromone. It's very similar to the scent the mother would give off to calm her pups. Adapto does offer a spray product that you can use in the vehicle um, on the cover that you use to put over the top of the crate or even a snuggle puppy that goes inside the crate would be beneficial too. The snuggle puppy or the heartbeat dog is a stuffed animal with a mechanical heart in it that beats similar to a litter mate or their mother. It can be very comforting for your puppy who is transitioning into a new home and away from their litter mates. Again, I'll link all these products in the description below. We also recommend holding off on feeding your puppy at least 30 minutes before you need to travel. You can give them a nylo bone or a marrow bone to chew on to keep them occupied while they're in their crate. Giving a puppy a bone to chew on will ease their anxiety and they will be less likely to be destructive. We often hear that puppies who travel outside of their crate chew on seat belts, headrests, and the seat cushions. These can be pretty expensive to replace. It's always recommended that we do a positive association training with vehicles and training in vehicles. This means that we're going to do something called pre-training or working on a skill before we actually need it. In this case, it often includes going out to the vehicle and rewarding the puppy for being near the vehicle, rewarding the puppy each time they get in the vehicle, and for the first few sessions, we're not even turning on the car or leaving the driveway. After a few initial sessions, you may want to put your puppy in the vehicle and give them some positive reinforcement, typically in the form of food reinforcements. As silly as this sounds, you may want to drive up and down the driveway without actually leaving to go anywhere. We often break these kinds of training sessions down into micro sessions or small building block sessions. It's possible that the next step in the training sequence would be to drive around the block and return home without actually going anywhere. Your puppy would be receiving positive reinforcement for calm behavior. Once your puppy starts to make a positive association with getting in the car and traveling short distances, it may be time to take them on what I like to call field trips. This means we may go to places that oftentimes puppies think are pretty scary, such as the veterinarian's office or the groomers. The sole purpose of this type of trip is to travel in the car, arrive at the destination, enter the building or potentially remain outside of the building, receive positive reinforcement, and return back home. This makes all the other times that your puppy actually received either veterinary services or grooming services less stressful. We do take field trips to other places such as pet stores, parks, home improvement stores, those kinds of places once we've started working on the puppy training games. Now you can learn more about the puppy training games that you should be starting to play with your puppy as soon as they come home by following the 30 Day to Puppy Perfection course that we offer. All right, before I share my last couple of tips with you, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified when next week's video becomes available. Now, one last thing to consider that often gets overlooked, barking. Puppies should not be allowed to stick their head out the window. I've seen several cases where dogs have been pelted with stones and pebbles, 
uh, have had eye injuries, and believe it or not, I've seen dogs fall out of a vehicle before. The owner went over a bump, the dog lost its footing, and actually fell out the window. Now, as I briefly mentioned before, dogs really should not be riding on their owner's lap. This could be very distracting. As we've mentioned before, uh, it can be dangerous if someone slams on the brakes in front of you and your dog really may go flying through the windshield. Now, the last thing I want to mention that often gets overlooked is that barking. Um, dogs that are not secured in the crate or have easy access to look out the window may start to develop a barking habit at things passing by. This includes vehicles passing by, people walking, bicycles going by at random, or just any other objects they see. What happens is they get fulfillment for the barking behavior. Let me explain. A dog that is allowed to bark at people or things starts to believe their barking is actually making those things go away. What's actually happening is that you're driving past those objects, not that your dog is making them go away. We call this an accidental reinforcement. In order to prevent excessive barking, be sure to keep your pup secured in the vehicle, work on the positive association training I mentioned earlier, and don't allow your dog to focus on things passing by out the window. Instead, keep them in their crate or secured in the back with a safety harness and with a busy bone to chew on. All right, in the comments below, tell me, how will you be traveling with your puppy? In the crate or with a safety harness?